All right, it is two o'clock and we've got the majority of our people on. So I think we'll go ahead and get started and then any, any stragglers can sign in as, they're, as they arrive. Um, welcome everybody to the April DCHS second Sunday. Um, before we get too far along, I wanted to mention next month, we have a little bit of a change. Um, because of Mother's Day, it's gonna be a third Sunday. Um, and we're gonna have Chairman Larry Wright Jr. of the Ponca Tribe. He'll be presenting a talk titled Chief Standing Bear and the Ponca. Um, that week will be the 142nd anniversary of the Standing Bear trial. Um, so that'll be a, a really interesting talk, I'm sure. Um, but this week, um, we're very happy to welcome Jim Farrow, who's gonna be talking um, about another historic Omaha home. Um, for a brief introduction um, the, of the Farrow family, um, Barb Farrow is Director of Development at the Youth Emergency Services, um, where she's been since November of 2018. Um, her work history includes working for three mayoral administrations, uh, Mayor Fahey, Suttle, and Stothert. Um, Barb has a long history of community service, volunteering on several boards and many organizations. Most recent service includes co-chairing Heartland Family Services Gala in 2019 and serving on her church's board of art and music through February of this year. And her most proud accomplishment is raising four successful children while in the midst of, of renovating a historic home and property. And Jim, who's gonna be kind of our conversation leader today, um, is a cloud infrastructure salesperson for Oracle. He currently serves as president of the Blackstone Business Improvement District, and he has served on the Destination Midtown Board and the Field Club of Omaha Board of Directors. And Jim also shares Barb's most proud accomplishment. So welcome, Jim, and we're very excited to hear the story of very interesting story of, of the home. So go ahead and take it away. Very good. Thank you, Natalie, for, for inviting us to do this. Um, you know, this has been a, a neat journey that uh, even putting this presentation together has been good for us and for me to kind of document what we've done and, and how we've done it. So this is a, a good exercise for us. So thank you for that. And uh, so just to start it off, uh, 3722 Dewey is our address. Uh, you can Google it, Google Maps it, uh, and, and take a look. Um, it, it's been a, you know, and I'll show you, a lot of this presentation uh, is gonna be a lot of photos, uh, old and new, and in between. So we're gonna show you where, where it was, where it fell to, and then what we're trying to do to make it a little bit better from where it was when we got it. <clears throat> now, it, it hasn't always, as you can see, not always been uh, 3722 Dewey Ave. Um, we sit on the northeast corner of Dewey Ave uh, in 38th Street. And I guess they had different names, Half Howard Street and Grove Street, so kind of neat. Um, and then it, it became this current address in, in uh, 1903. Very good. So uh, quick agenda, you know, it's really brief. Uh, gonna give you a history, a few slides, and then a lot of show and tell, and then some closing comments. So with that, we'll go ahead and go. And I believe this is being recorded, right, Natalie? Yes, it is being recorded for, um, it'll go up on YouTube um, in a couple of weeks and then it'll be part of our archive. Um, and I also meant to add, um, anybody who has any questions as we're going, please feel free to type them into the chat. Um, and I'll make sure they get worked in. Um, so just feel free to type them in as, as they come to mind. Um, and we'll, we'll have question answering kind of um, trickled in throughout um, the presentation, so. Very good, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have different uh, kind of breaking points. If there's any questions mm -hmm. uh, I bring up along the way, just go ahead and type them in. And, and as I see a few in there, I'll, I'll stop and ask Natalie to read those. Mm -hmm. Okay. A uh, little history on the house. Uh, it was built, we were told it was built in 1892. We believe it was Oscar Williams had the first home. And uh, in, according to the records uh, that Natalie was able to, to go through, the first mention in the directories was 1903 through 1907 was Oscar, uh, you know, owner of the, the Williams Shoe Company, kind of cool. Uh, next person was uh, the most significant, one of the most significant, I think, is, is Harry Bostwick, not related to Lewis. And uh, he was uh, a lawyer also. So, but uh, president of the Stockyards National Bank, 
Walter Head, another very significant owner of this property. So those two really, uh, the Bostwick and Head families really did a lot of, I'll say remodeling and redoing of the house and spent, and, and that's where you're gonna see a lot of the pictures is from when those two owned the home. Uh, Walter Head, by the way, anybody from Mutual of Omaha or heard of Mutual of Omaha, Walter was the first policy owner, life policy owner from Mutual of Omaha. Had very, was very uh, well connected to uh, both Chris, uh, the Chris family. So knew them very well. Obviously lived close to them. Uh, next owner that of record is from 29 to 32 is, is Raymond Bauer, another banker. Uh, quite the common theme here, owners and bankers. Uh, in 33, the records show Anna and David Baum, and that's the Baum Iron family. And in, in, uh, Anna and David had a daughter named Margaret. So Margaret married Sloan Allen, and Margaret kept her, her name. She was Margaret uh, Sloan Allen, or Baum Allen is what she went by. Um, and then they had a son, David, who they named after Margaret's father, David Baum. And that was the last owner that uh, had it pr prior to us in 2002. Okay. Next slide. There's th this is a picture um, of Sloan and uh, his wife, Margaret. And here's a later picture in 1958 of Sloan Allen. Uh, the, the story that we got and, and we kind of witnessed and some of the stuff that was left in the house is that uh, Sloan and David, Sloan would walk to work from 38th and Dewey down to their place uh, on, on, uh, on Harney, on 15th and Harney. So they would walk to work. And this is a picture that looks like him walking. And, and David, his, his son would walk with him uh, but he uh, had to walk behind him. And uh, kind of interesting, though. always walk to work, which is a good thing. Uh, here's our family, current owners. Uh, so you see our whole family here. We have uh, three boys and my favorite daughter, Leah, in the middle there. That was her wedding. That was uh, last summer during COVID. And her husband behind her. And to the, my left uh, is Nate's fiance, Carmen. And then you have Matthew on the, the far left and uh, next to me is Matthew and my beautiful wife next to him. Uh, our background, uh, we were always interested in this home. We used to drive by it. We lived at uh, 36th in Woolworth and we'd drive by this home and we'd always call it, the kids would call it the secret garden house. Uh, and, and you'll see some pictures as to why. It was a secret garden because boy, was it a secret. Um, when we saw it was for sale, it was actually a sale prior to an IRS auction. And I, I worked at Mutual of Omaha and yes, I used to walk to work. I, I guess I had the little bit of bomb in me there. Uh, I'd walk from 36 and Woolworth to Mutual of Omaha for work all the time, mainly because you couldn't park anywhere around Mutual, it's very difficult. So, we, we weren't interested in paying the, the high uh, price that they wanted for the house when it was for sale through a realtor. So when we heard it was uh, seized by the IRS, uh, we, we contacted uh, the IRS and found out how this process works. We, we found out quite a bit of information. Uh, a friend of mine worked for the US District Attorney Office here in Nebraska and, and, and made a connection with him and, and said, hey, how do they do these? Uh, he connected me with the person that does the property sales of seized property. And he pretty much told me, here's how it's gonna go. It's gonna be uh, someone that wants to buy the property as, uh, as an investment and make it a multifamily home, um, you know, break it apart. And then there's going to be someone, uh, it sounds like you, that would want to buy it for their family, be able to pay it more than what um, a developer would want to do, and um, you know, slowly fix it up. So th that's how it, it, it kind of panned out when we, we did the auction right in the driveway uh, on the, what we'll call the sun porch. 
Um, kind of scary, very scary to do. Uh, full purchase amount was due 24 hours before the auction or after the auction. When the final, the dust settled, we had to, to pay for that. The sale is as is. Uh, one thing my wife reminded me too to mention is this, the purchase, when you do something like this from the, from a, from the IRS and the government's point of view, the person that owes the back taxes has the opportunity to come back and pay whatever we paid and they would get the property. So for a year, we had that hanging over our head of, you know, whatever we did, we didn't, you know, their recommendation was don't do a whole lot of fix up on the house the first year, because if you do, and then David comes in and pays his tax bill, you're out. It's, you got to get out of the house and whatever you've done to it, that's his. He, he doesn't have to compensate you for that. Uh, we we're pretty confident that that wouldn't happen, um, but that was still over our heads. And uh, as you try to get loans to do stuff, that's what uh, there's a risk involved in, in uh, you know, with the banks, they don't want to put their money at risk, uh, just like us. So it was rather tricky. So we, we, um, we, we got the house as, you know, having basically two properties. It was set up as two properties when we got it. So we have the main house is, is one piece of the property and a big piece of the other, you know, everything that is in the house is a, listed as another property. Uh, it's listed as 3716 Dewey F. Um, as I said, the auction was in, in 2002. Uh, we did clean up and tried to make it something we can move into. Um, November 20 or 2002 is when we moved the family in. Uh, prior to that, we filled at least two dumpsters of stuff that was left behind, junk and stuff that we couldn't use. Stuff I didn't know if we should keep it or not. We, we kind of kept it because um, we just didn't know what it was. Um, one thing that was good, and you'll see it in some pictures, is Baum Iron um, was also dealing with the IRS and the business was owned, now owned by the employees from David. And David uh, was living in Switzerland. Uh, we'll kind of get to that, but um, he did bring some of the original doors uh, back on the main floor, which was kind of nice. And, and none of this could have happened uh, I, I, I thank and I also blame uh, the family and friends for helping get this place. Um, we, I really appreciate them and, I, and we try to pay them back as much as we can as, you know, as far as having events here and having fun and invite them over for, for different events. Uh, first project, I kind of mentioned David. <clears throat> David, uh, prior to knowing that he was going to lose the, you know, move out of the house, he he had his employees come over and pull as much stuff off the walls, the, the original sconces, the the doors that he wanted. Um, he David had the original drawings that uh, Bostwick had done by F. A. Henniger, so he had the original blue lines, and and. As a treat, we're going to see those today. Um, so that was that he had those in his possession. David uh, had he owed twenty two million dollars in inheritance taxes, and that was uh, compounded annually. So the IRS was going to compound those uh, every year. And last I talked, uh, at least ten years ago, with the the, the agent that was in charge of this, she pretty much said that this is her sole job is trying to get the money back from, from him. Uh, it was up to over $65 million last I talked to her. But uh, he, he pretty much said, I, you know, I didn't inherit anything. Uh, it was really another woman he married, his dad married over in Europe and that uh, they should ask her for the taxes because he didn't have anything. Uh, that, that didn't really float very well with the IRS. And I guess we can all guess that that'd be true. Um, David, his intentions were, he, he filled up two large containers of fixtures and stuff, sent it to Australia because he actually wanted to build this house in Australia. Um, 
in, in the bomb iron folks uh, in later years, uh, you know, they showed me a lot of the, the doorknobs and, and uh, kind of the, the hardware stuff that, that David bought to, uh, to go into that new house. So it's kind of interesting. As I said, he is in Switzerland or was in Switzerland. I believe he passed away in talking with the bomb iron folks, I am very friendly with those folks. And uh, they said it, they do believe he has passed away. Prior to that, I, I did talk to him a number of times and, and tried to find out where stuff was and how can I get it. Um, you know, going back to those original drawings and, and what he had, he pretty much wanted, demanded that I, I pleasantly ask him uh, for those and that I would have to pay him $200. And I, I also had to work through getting his permission in, in a, a format that would allow the people in Australia that had the two containers that he wasn't paying rent on that were just sitting uh, in their docks in the pier and, and trying to figure out how to get the original sconces and that equipment back in here. That was quite a learning experience. I had become an international trader for a little bit to get those imported back into the United States and uh, working through my friends in uh, my newfound friends in Australia. So it was kind of neat. So a, a lot of a lot of dialogue there, but uh, we were able to get, long story short is, is we were able to get a lot of the original sconces that were installed, I don't say original, original, the ones that uh, Mr. Bostwick had uh, installed throughout the home, which is kind of cool. Uh, second project, it really, we had to make it livable. It, you know, we, we we're gonna move out of our, our home and field club. Uh, how do we do that? Um, my, my wife uh, was, was pregnant with our now 18 year old son, Jackson. So he was on the way and, and, you know, that's, you know, a lot of the work would have to be done. I, uh, there's a reason why I'm in sales. Uh, I had to talk my wife into sell her on. We can do this, you know, <laughs> you know, um, I still get, uh, you know, can we do it? You know, absolutely. We can do it. Uh, you just got to get through it. So here's a list of our, our children. Um, and you can read those. Uh, very proud of all of them as uh, Barb mentioned in her proud accomplishments. So we're very happy with all of our kids and where they're at and how they're going. So the main thing is we needed to clean out and get the rooms available, make sure we had a bathroom they could use. You know, we're coming from a house that had one into a house that had, you know, six. So we gotta get one to work, right? So there was a lot to do. And I mentioned clean up the yard. That's, it's a huge task and you'll kind of see some of that. And we're still working on a lot of that. Um, is there any questions, Natalie? Anything out there I can touch on? Nope, you're on mute, but I'm taking it that we don't have any. Yep, sorry. Um, yeah, so just a reminder, everybody, feel free to um, send in your questions via chat as they come to mind, because um, it doesn't look like we have anything yet. Um, Good. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, good. Now we're, we're, we're going to get into show and tell now, and I'm going to show you a lot of old photos. And a lot of these are going to be, a lot of the old black and white ones you're going to see um, out on the uh, Durham website. And if you want to look at them, because I'm going to go a little bit faster because I got too many pictures. Uh, you know, this is kind of your worst nightmare of Uncle Bob showing you the, the trip to the Grand Canyon, right? So I don't want to be too much of that. Um, let's try to make it interesting. If you want to go back and look at these, all you have to do is type in 3722 Dewey, and you'll see all these, a lot of these old pictures uh, on the Durham website. Uh, this one, in, in the first few, you won't see on, on, on the Durham website. Uh, this is one original drawing. I'm not sure when uh, this was done, but it shows the main residence. Uh, and then uh, the uh, reflect, and, and you, you can see my mouse, correct? Okay, you can see the uh, reflecting pool that they, they wanted to put out there with a fountain in the middle. And uh, this is a driveway. They had it just curving here, but it also exited at the bottom into the alley. So there's two entrances. 
you can go all the way through with the with the driveway. Uh, this is original blueprints uh, or that that were done. I, I won't say original. These are the ones that uh, Bostwick had done as he wanted to make the house more grand than it was already done. And we're not sure what the original ones look like, but this is what uh, this is what we came up with. Uh, kind of interesting things to note is it's it's a smaller footprint than what it is today. Walter had expanded the home and changed things around. Um, so I said, uh, Bostwick and Head are the, the two that have done the most to the home. And uh, this porch is still here. This is the porch. This is the main house. Uh, the entrance uh, had some steps coming this way and then into the house and then into a parlor that was here. And we'll kind of show you that. So this is the, the uh, first floor, it says at the bottom here, first floor plan. The steps were gonna come off, off the, the main uh, port cachere and the doorway was here and then it, the doorway into the par parlor or you could go through this way and then go through the hallway. So a parlor here, main hall, front door was here. Very good porch has always been there. Um, a living room here, dining room here, kitchen. Very simple setup. To get to the kitchen from the dining room, they had swinging doors through here. This, is, this all has changed when, when Walter had redid the home. Uh, so this is the back end of the house, uh, breakfast room, and then uh, some cabinets and, and then steps down to the basement. Originally, it looks like there, it says, take out the steps going to the basement that were originally here. So we do know that there was some changes made. Okay. Uh, this is the second floor. And I'll, I'll point you at the bottom here. Here's where F.A. Henniger, architect, second floor for the home. So this is actually what I had to break it so you had enough fidelity to read these things. Uh, the first floor and second floor were all on one sheet. So I wanted to make sure you'd be able to see it. So uh, up the steps and then Mr. Bostwick's room, which is uh, as my, uh, you, we'll, we'll kind of get into that and in, in how big that is. Bath, master bath was off of that. And then um, a closet here, closet here for a guest room. This was a, a, a bathroom. This is a bathroom also. I don't know why they didn't label it that way, but this was also a bathroom. And then this is a bathroom also. So four bathrooms on this floor, guest room, guest room, guest room, Mr. Bostwick's room. Uh, very big uh, linen closet in here. Okay, go to the next one. Uh, and, and again, what Henniger had here is, is uh, this is the third floor. So there's a large sleeping room on the north end of the home. So again, up the steps, big hallway. Uh, it says uh, bedroom, 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 and then this is a sleeping room. And there's a bathroom here with the, and they added a skylight to it. Okay. Any questions before I, I get off of the, uh, oh wait, I'll, maybe I have one more, let me see. Yeah, I have a basement. Uh, the basement shot, uh, again, it comes down the steps. The cistern was here. Um, i feeling it's still there, uh, but it's covered with concrete because there is a cistern at our house today, but that is outside the back door on the north side. And it, it does work. All the gutters still run uh, and fill that cistern with water when we get rain. And then it it has its own pumping system uh, using a vacuum and weight of the water will pump itself out into the into the sewer system. Pretty cool. Wow, that is cool. Um, it looks like we do have one question kind of back to the to the bidding process. Um, yes. Someone is wondering how how many bidders there were if you were competing. Um, there were very... there were twelve people that that asked to be bidders. Mm -hmm. And uh, like the IRS auctioneer told me, it'll be actually two of us that'll 
it'll end up being. He mm -hmm. says a lot of people will will register, but they'll fall by the wayside pretty quick. Sure. <laughs> um, I, I guess the big aha for us was we had a set budget uh, that we could go to that we mm -hmm. knew we could get X amount of money to pay off the IRS uh, at a certain level. When mm -hmm. the when the uh, the auctioneer started out at uh, half a million dollars that we that was well above our number. We both <laughs> did a big gulp. It's like, oh boy, I guess maybe not. And then he went down to a smaller number and then we built up the number that we actually got. And it uh -huh. was very close. It was very close. Oh, and they are also wondering if you'd be willing to share what that winning bid was um, or if uh, not that Let's just say it was uh, less than $300,000. Yeah, and wow. the, the property itself is uh, one acre of land. And, mm -hmm. and as you'll see, it it has a wall on half of it and the other half is a wrought iron fence. So mm -hmm. it is its own compound. So we're, we're okay for the zombie cop, uh, <laughs> apocalypse if it happens, we'll just work on that. Wait. And we'd actually just did get a question about the layout as well. Um, was the large sleeping room on the north side primarily for cool sleeping during the summer, or do you know if it was used for children's rooms or maybe servants' uh, quarters? Or we think that was uh, the, a sleeping room for the the servants, uh, and and then I think this these all these bedrooms were for the the uh, servants. Mm -hmm. That's what we believe. Sure. Okay. Very cool. Good questions. Yeah. Thank you. Keep them coming. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the basement, um, you don't see a furnace, no air conditioning. Yeah, a lot of rooms down there. This one now is our uh, wine cellar, kind of fix that up. This is uh, this room is actually where all the, the two boilers are. Um, and then this, the, this room over here is uh, no walls in between, is now open space. And that's where we get our plants ready for the gardens. So we, we have, uh, Two sons that are very, uh, very good at growing things. I'm not one of them. I'm good at cutting stuff down and knocking walls down, but I'm not good about planting things. So they are very good about starting and, and capturing stuff um, that is that, that is already out there and then bringing it in and keep it growing. Uh, I think they get that from their grandmother, Jan Riggenbaugh, who's uh, a fantastic uh, gardener and recently retired from uh, the World Herald's uh, article that she used to have. Very good. So this is kind of open space. All right, uh, next treat um, in, in these pictures, these are from when uh, Louis Bostwick used to be hired to create, um, take the pictures of these old mansions. He created a book for the, the uh, people. And this is his original book that he created. So Louis created this for HC when he hired him to take pictures of the home after he done some remodeling and made it the home, basically what Henniger did. So it's kind of cool. Uh, a quick side story on how we got this. Uh, I, I got an email um, from somebody in Oregon saying, hey, I got this stuff. You own this property. You should, you should really look at my stuff that I got from you. I thought, oh boy, someone's trying to, you know, just come after, a, you know, they, you know, is this a scam? What is it? It turned out it wasn't. It was someone that was actually a, a, a weight service person here in the house. And she knew the family very well. And she had all this stuff. And she was in Oregon. She passed away. And this person just knew her. And they were going to throw all this stuff into the dumpster. And he did a little research and found out about the home and, and sent us an email. And I do have that email. It's kind of neat. Uh, but uh, basically, a, a good person out in Oregon save the stuff from the dumpster. Uh, here's the the first photo in it. Uh, as you see, he kind of put it together as two photos as one. Uh, not sure what mansion that is. I am not uh, Mrs. Cassette, so I can't tell you that. I'm sure she would is jumping up and down saying that's what it is, but I'm not sure what it is. But it's kind of cool. And, and one, one thing that we do, you don't see in this, these photos is um, there's a carriage house now built in the back here. So a two and a half story uh, carriage house. 
Uh, another photo of the, the front entrance. And, and one thing to note uh, that we note is, is that the, the house, the, the front porch is, is awesome. They, it got screened in. So it, it, uh, th there's a screen door here in the front steps and on the, the side steps and the windows are all have uh, beautiful screens on them. So uh, we can sit out there and not worry about bugs any time of the year. Another photo of the home from the front. One thing that we noticed too is that the, the gate has changed. This, this is a nice gate, love to have that gate. Uh, but there's a much more ornate gate that you'll see that is taking its place. Uh, side view. One thing to note, uh, these three windows, uh, there's no patio over here. Uh, in, in later pictures, you're going to see a, a whole patio that gets put in on this side of the house. The house gets expanded by Walter Head. Uh, it comes to the north. And uh, so you still, you can't see this, but uh, you, it, this expands. He wanted to expand the bedroom and the main floor is what he did. Uh, another view. Um, there used, uh, last, probably three months ago, there was a house over here that has been removed. And it looks like some townhomes may be, I'm sorry, yeah, townhomes, six townhomes may be taking up that lot. Um, if they can sell them, that'd be good. We'll, we'll see if that happens. Projects uh, always dependent on who can pay for them. So here's uh, that pool that you saw in the, one of the original drawings. Notice the, uh, the fountain there, looks nice. I really like these coming off of here. Maybe at some point we'll do something like that. But nice sunken garden. Another angle. One thing I wanted you to notice, these, are, these must have been right during the construction because the the glass is not in the porca share here. So not all of it has glass yet. In some photos it does, some it doesn't. So this is all fresh. This is a view off the, um, the side door. So you can see from the, the side door all the way through, see the fountain. Uh, the, the gardens, the steps up and down, and then a beautiful brick wall back here with another uh, trellis. You can kind of see the back gate is back here. Another view. There was a beautiful wall here. It's very tall, uh, extremely tall, beautiful background to it. Another view, uh, if, if those that uh, are aware of the Cudahy Mansion, you can see a little bit of the Cudahy Mansion. Uh, this is probably the only remnants left of the Cudahy Mansion that is still in that location. But uh, the Cudahy Mansion was there and then the other mansion over here. There's some different views. I'll go back real quick. This is the uh, Arthur Metz, the Metz uh, Brewery. And his brother uh, ended up building a mansion. Those that are aware of it, they, they uh, caught fire and, and, and was uh, taken down a few years ago. And from that same, looking back at the house. A little swinging gate that's off the north side. So servants can come in and out through the swinging gate. Uh, part of the porch, we love using that porch. Uh, this is uh, the, the uh, parlor that we mentioned earlier. So this is the coming off the side door. You'd be able to come in here, step on the bearskin rug and uh, had a nice fireplace here and, and uh, was set up. This is the uh, drawing room or living room. I'm gonna point out something here is, is this mantle was the original one that we see. That's not what we have, but we'll show that in later pictures. Look in the opposite way. So it's a very large, long room. Uh, I'm not a decorator, but uh, I think it's, it's kind of interesting how it's set up. This is looking into 
uh, you saw it as the dining room and this is the breakfast room back here. And the doors over here to go into the kitchen. And here's that breakfast room. We still have these doors. However, the leaded glass has been taken out and it's just paneled. This is the master bedroom back then. And I'll, I'll point out these, these sconces because I say I got the originals back, it's not these. You'll see them in the later photos. Uh, the other end of the uh, master bedroom, this fireplace, gas, gas fireplace is still there. It's not working, but it's still there. Aha, uh -huh. master bathroom, that's what you need. Got to have a barber's chair in there. Isn't that lovely? And if you're that wet enough, we got to have a massage table. I don't know how they fit these in there, tell you the truth. I don't know if we could fit uh, those two things in there, but they look pretty good. Look very good in there. Uh, when we got the house, all these, the, these fixtures that you're seeing, the, the, the toilet, the sink, bathtub, all the, all the things were still there. So those were original and stayed there. This is an updated photo. So these are when Walter had the house and uh, I can try to point him out here. Here's, we found him, here's Waldo, here's Walter. So he included himself uh, again when Bostwick took, he hired Bostwick also, Lewis, to take pictures of the home. So you can see a lot, a lot of growth, vegetation has grown in. He switched out the, uh, the fountain. Looks pretty good. Still nothing built across the street. You can barely see the cut of hay mansion over there. Um, these are photos uh, our son Nate came across. Uh, Nate gave these as a gift and, and uh, kind of shows the, um, Walter was redoing the home and, and doing a lot of things because he was gonna have uh, Calvin Coolidge come visit with uh, General Lejeune. Yes, Camp Lejeune, named after him, pretty famous uh, guy. Um, they came, we originally thought they spent the night at, the, at, at our house, but they didn't. Um, and we found out through Mike Kelly at the World Herald, he did some research for us and, and said, no, they didn't spend the night, but they definitely were there. So this is, um, they had some bunting put up and here's the street view, Get some flags out there. There we go. I believe this tree is still in that same location. Um, so kind of cool. This is the interior. Now, now what Walter did, his, his daughter was an interior designer and she was over in Paris. And she said, dad, they're tearing down chalets to make roads wider. We got to come get some stuff and put it in the house. So that's what you're seeing here is, is the influence of uh, Walter's daughter. And so this floor that you see came out of, uh, came from Paris. Um, the, this is not marble, this is all faux that was done. And a lot of the molding is not wooden. Uh, again, they loved the, the, what the French did is they knew how to make it look good, right? Uh, and make it look like wood. So these are, these are actually plaster. And we'll see that in a number of places in, in the home. And I don't know why this, this little, I, don't, I, I noticed it online that piece is also on the, must be on some other negative uh, for that photo. But he put a, so this parlor became the, the grand foyer. And I, I'll point out this uh, chandelier that you see here. Uh, this'll uh, be removed and put in the third story. So I'll show you that. Uh, I, I wanna point out this, this photo because it comes into play later. Um, this is looking from the, the foyer back into the house. So this is, was the, the, the living room um, or dining room and then the breakfast room is back there. But notice how they, they kind of made it doors disappear. So there's a door here uh, to go into the kitchen, but you won't see any old photos of the kitchen because who cares about the kitchen, right? Except for us. 
Uh, so here, here's our uh, updated photo of the, the drawing room. The mantle has changed. Uh, this is the first cut at cover up the, the good wooden floors with this new thing called carpeting. Like, it really looks pretty, looks like cardboard to me, but that's me. Uh, here's another photo looking the opposite way to the north. Here's another photo, different time period, different chandelier and looking north. Now we have the fixtures that I kind of mentioned are in place. This is the, uh, the dining room. And these, these are very large closets here. Kind of need set up big portrait of, I'm not sure who, lovely lady. Uh, different time period of the same dining room. And this is what we call the library now. Uh, we don't have a piano in there as you'll see in some photos, but the library is intact because it's just a, they, they took out that entrance going into the kitchen and removed that and made this a bigger room. Uh, this is the second floor, gotta have a little table with the, with the phone on it. You're looking into the master bedroom there. Master bedroom as redone for Mr. Bostwick, new, new uh, light fixtures. And then he added that sleeping room we kind of mentioned. There's a sleeping room for when it was uh, really love what they did those on the windows. Kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to point out this too. See the, the, the light switches here and then there's a buzzer to call a servant. And I'll, I'll point that out when we get to the kitchen later periods. Uh, one of the bedrooms. Uh, our daughter was in this one, my favorite daughter. I only have one daughter, I can say that. Uh, this is uh, a son's, we're in this one. And then, uh, no, we don't have the harp anymore. But this is our son Jackson's room now. Some ways I kind of wonder how they fit some of this stuff in there, but it's staged. Now we're getting into the photos of uh, when we bought the house. I only got about 18 minutes left, so I'll go as fast as I can. So these are uh, photos of, of the house when we got it. Uh, not so grand. Seriously, this is not, a, it was not a grand home when we got it. It was very overgrown. Uh, and we get, we get the inside too, you go, wow, okay, what happened? Um, what happened to those grand photos Jim just showed us that were in black and white? Um, again, it was just overgrown. And I don't know why we called it the secret garden place because it was a secret, you couldn't see any of it. Uh, one thing that we did notice uh, when we first got the house is, is at the entrances at the, uh, here in the driveway, there would be people throw coins. Also in the corner of the house at the end of, I'll go back a few here. At this corner, we found in the yard, there were coins. And we got no idea why, maybe it was for, Good luck passing a spooky place, um, the Scooby-Doo house, who knows? Um, I, I was tempted to put up a sign just to, you know, as we we're trying to fix it up, I said, don't throw coins, throw dollars. We need dollars, not coins. <laughs> we need more than just coins. So yeah, the, the, the yard, um, how do you pull a car in here? Uh, you, you just can't. Um, this is the driveway going to the back gate. You just couldn't get a vehicle in and out. Uh, that's the view from the back gate to the, you just can't see anything. Uh, we had a little visitor. You remember that beautiful view I had? You can see the back wall and those steps and the fountain. Go this is our view. How oh, very nice. And the auction I talked about was just to the left of here. Natalie, we got some questions. You're on mute. Sorry, um, someone is wondering um, if you know how long the house was empty before you bought it. Uh, the IRS had to make sure there, and it was kind of sketchy what was going on with David. David, David had a, a person that was taking care of the home, uh, Kathy Smizer, and he they never set up anything for that woman. 
to take care of her when you know they were gone. So she had no 401k, no, no retirement. There was they, they just paid her cash. So she had nothing to live on. And the IRS had to move her out because they seized the property. Hmm. So the IRS had it for a number of months uh, and, and prepared it for the sale. They didn't really prepare a whole lot, I'll tell you that. But um, she lived in the neighborhood and, and David tried to, when the IRS was seizing the property, he tried to move the title over to her and, and the IRS disallowed it. And, and hmm. it was very much, he was trying to give her the home, which would have been nice. Then she could have got the profits from a hmm. sale, but that he, they just did not take care of their, the person that hmm. took care of the home when they weren't there. Hmm. Do you know when he moved to Switzerland? I don't have exact date. Okay. Good question though. So we, we were doing, starting to take out some of the, the problems and there were just tons of brick in the yard too. We took out trees. I uh, kind of see the walls, pretty bad shape. I mean, this is pretty ugly. The Cudahy Mansion's gone, the 500 building took its place. Uh, we did find some of the old foundations for the steps and in, in pool. There was some beauty there. There's a few flowers and, and other things that were kind of neat in there. So our son, Matthew, another photo of the, the hedges. We trimmed them a little bit so we can get a car in and out. Uh, made first major project was, was let's get a driveway we can use. So we have that done. Uh, second major, another major project, uh, that wall that you saw, it, it fell one winter and we had to take it down. And uh, we build it back up that is gonna last another hundred years. Quite frankly, the, the, the people putting up the wall um, were amazed uh, the detail work and how the footings were done back that long ago. They couldn't believe how well it was done. So that was pretty cool. Some of the workers, um, what I'm showing you here too is, is when the, the Mets mansion burnt down, uh, they were just getting rid of stuff. They, they, they were gonna take everything to the dump. We pre prevented that and grabbed a number of these bal balusters um, and significant pieces. Yeah, they were beat up because they weren't caring how they were knocking stuff down. So we grabbed as much as we could. So this piece here, these here, were gonna be incorporated into the new wall. We didn't want to buy new brick. So all the brick that you see on our wall is uh, reused. We thought that would be best. Uh, it was cleaned up and that's uh, the result. Beautiful long wall put in place. This is early on, you still see where the pallets were. Don't look at that. Um, and then uh, my statue that was given to me by our, by our kids and my wife, um, is summer, it's called. And a little toast to uh, the workers, uh, Michael Olk, his son, one of the workers, my son, Nate, my beautiful wife, Barb. Uh, going back to when we first got the home, here's some more photos. This is the foyer. Uh, filing cabinets were stored in here, so it was really scraped up. We have since hired somebody to uh, come in and, and he polished the marble and he was given off an odor when he was polishing it. He goes, smell that? I go, yeah. Why does it kind of smell like, uh, okay, South Omaha a little bit? He said, that's because uh, this is, you know, this is a real old marble and it was quarried by, uh, it, it has natural elements in it. He says, that, that shows you it's in very good, you know, it's very good. So it was kind of cool to get that fixed and replaced. Uh, there's the uh, drawing room, not bad. And here, I, I kind of pointed out before, here's where that uh, grandfather clock was. Here's the view inside that door. They put a, there was no bathroom on the main floor. They put a, a, a toilet and a sink and that was the entrance. <laughs> So bringing your groceries in, whatever, you got to close two doors to go to the restroom on the main floor is when it was set up. It's not how it is now. So that's that's what we got when we got the place. That's the kitchen. Love this, this big sink. 
we don't still have it. We, we still have it in the basement, and uh, you know, but we didn't incorporate into the new kitchen that we did. That's the reason why. Uh, this is where we got the house. So the, these are the big doors. Uh, one was put up, the other one needed to be hung in here. This is a swinging door that, that goes into the uh, kitchen. Uh, this is a view into the master bedroom. My uh, my father-in-law, Don Rigginbaugh, when he first saw it, he said, hey, this is the bowling alley. It's as long as a bowling alley. He set some pins out. Love that, man. Another view of the uh, master. Here's the lovely, lovely bathroom that we had off the master. There's There's no massage table here. There's no barber chair here. That was the sink we got. That's the, the shower we had. Uh, all the bathrooms were kind of set up this way. I don't know what David was thinking, but this kind of whatever. And then these, some worked, some didn't. Uh, we haven't got rid of any of the old tubs, but uh, we just had to put handheld stuff. This bathroom actually turned into our laundry room. So we removed the toilet and the sink and, and put a tub sink and a, a stackable washer dryer there. This is the third story. This is the first uh, servant's room. Um, there's that, they moved the chandelier up that was in the foyer up to, to that room. It's still there today. And there, there was the lovely bathroom on the third floor, pretty ugly. Now, okay. We're going to sprint through the next 10 minutes or so, show you what uh, Barb and I have been up to. This is the dining room now. And uh, when, when I'm not the interior designer or thinking about things, but my wife had a, a great vision and they, they kind of did, she did the three precious metals here. You're seeing gold, metal, and bronze. You can't really see the, the silver, uh, but uh, there's a, some places uh, all the way around the, the top of the, the, they kind of had a space and we painted that in silver, kind of a reflective mirror kind of thing. Yeah, so there's our, our new dining room. From the dining room, this is looking back into the library. No, we don't have our grand piano here. Actually, our baby grand is, is in the dry, drawing room now. So there's the library. We call this the library slash, and we have a TV there now. In the, uh, kitchen was uh, fixed up, got rid of the big sink and we totally opened up. The original kitchen was uh, three rooms uh, with a, a, a maid's pantry also that had a sink in it and a butler's pantry also. So we pretty much opened up things. Again, not my design, my better half knew how to do that. She really designed things around a, a, a large oven that could handle parties, family events, whatever we needed. And this kind of view back, and this is kind of a, a tell. I'm gonna flip back up real quick. Notice the, the curved windows. These curved windows were actually in a servant's room in the back when, when Walter redid the house. And if I can flip back here, you can kind of see all the windows were actually square. The only nice round ones that were, you know, the new addition is where they added the round ones. Kind of cool. Kind of makes it hard for uh, having shades on it, but I'm not worried about that. Now in the, in the, in the kitchen, uh, Walter had, and I pointed out the little buzzer in the sleeping room. So whatever buzzer hits, and we don't have any servants, right? Um, that's not going to happen, but at least that, that whole system still works. Pretty cool. So that buzzer system still works. This is looking uh, again back in to the dining room, the library. Here's our foyer. Uh, that is not a bathroom anymore, promise you. We put one in, uh, in the kitchen area off the back door. Uh, we put, uh, the, the fountain does work. 
it's old school. I, I say old school because it doesn't recycle the water. I go down the basement, turn on the water to a trickle. It fills the tub and then it drains out underneath the porch. So don't have that on very often. If, you, if you're over and I have it on, something special. You're special. So uh, we did put a, a, a fixture in here. You can kind of read it, Hebe, the goddess of wine. There's our, our uh, drawing room. Again, we kept the, the mantle there. Had to redo the fireplace. Uh, first year uh, we had it, our, my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law bought us a, a chimney cleaning and that turned into the chimney sweep coming going, uh, you can't use this fireplace because bricks are falling down. There's no liner in here. It's like, okay, we, we had that quickly fixed and, and made that a, a very usable fireplace now. We went with the wood floors a few years ago. Here's our master bedroom. Got these sconces back from Australia, put them in place. Looking from the other angle. This is the last really bedroom that we did. Um, Barb and I waited to, we made sure all the kids' rooms were all done because of, let's, let's face it, this is an old house and lead paint was used. So we wanna make sure it was safe. The closet, we redid that a few years ago. Made that more usable. It was really kind of hard to use. Those all built-ins were there. Bathroom, we redid that. So when we had that redone, we did redid all the tile work. And we said, we really loved how the tile was all the way high, like it was back in the original, but it all had to be redone. So all this is tile that we got from uh, South Sunderland's. Uh, and Janelle had the home across the street for us for a little bit. We have great, fabulous new neighbors there. Mark and Paul Mazur. So we redid everything, much more usable. And that shower is a lot more usable. This is a picture of the third story. Um, so that sleeping room. And that, that quickly turned into a um, place that the kids can invite friends over and hang out. So it's been a great playroom for them and, and somewhere they can disappear to. We have family events. We used to be able to have family events. We had a lot of little kids. All the kids would go up to the third story and be in this room and all the adults would be downstairs, not worrying about the kids because there's enough age difference. To, everybody's watching after each other. Um, and then you just had to send someone up or yell up the steps to, hey, dinner, time for dinner. But uh, you couldn't hear them. It was so fabulous. You could have a conversation and not worry about things. Transition, uh, gonna go to the outside now real quick. Um, we, there is a lot of flowering trees. These are just some of the dogwoods blooming. You see this porch I mentioned before, before it never, there was never here before. And what we found out is, is the, the brickwork on top and used along here, that was all taken from when they pulled out the pools and, and the steps. So I think they reused it then. Uh, the story was that uh, a child drowned in one of those pools. A lot of the mansions in the neighborhood had them. And when a, a child drowned in one, everybody kind of said, okay, why are we doing this? Um, so that's the reason why we heard, rumor or not, that's why they pulled out the, the reflecting pools. Uh, that play yard, we turned it into play yard. These are a number of years ago because it still has the old wall up that was leaning in. Uh, we hoped it would last, it didn't. Uh, but we turned that into the kids, kids could have some fun growing up. Uh, this looks like today, kind of viewing it. And I, there's my uh, statue of uh, Summer. I call it crying summer because it looks like she has a little tear there. And beautiful elephant ears growing there. Uh, we get a lot of um, a lot of people loving the day lilies along the, the fence. And uh, we wanted to show that if you're ever in the neighborhood in June, they, they take over the sidewalk and uh, it's a beautiful thing. And we have, we've been 
my wife and I have been sitting on the porch in, in summers past and in, in, in the evening, you can't really see anybody on the porch, but we'd see some people pulling them, maybe taking them to a, a friend, um, a loved one, kind of cool. We never get upset, promise. Last thing I wanna do is kind of the end of the presentation. I would, a toast to uh, everybody for, for letting us talk. Um, that screened in porch gets used a lot as a toast to you, a toast to uh, Douglas County Historical Society. Thank you for inviting us. And if you're not a member, please join. I think that'd be great. Does a lot of great things. And uh, if you don't wanna join, just wanna make a donation, do that. Uh, go to their website and you can do that. Uh, Natalie, uh, do we have any more questions? Um, no new questions in the chat. A couple of people just saying thank you for sharing your story and for preserving this beautiful house. Um, and but I have a couple of questions, <laughs> um, if that's all right. Um, I was curious, you kind of mentioned the hardwood floors. Are those original or did you uh, relay new hardwood? So no, we didn't put any new hardwood in. Okay. One thing that was interesting when we were having them do the flooring, um, there were some spots in the, we called the library that they had to redo. And when they pulled some up, they said, there's another hardwood floor underneath this hardwood floor. Hmm. Yeah, that's what they did. They said, well, it's a good underlayment and then they, they, you know, fixed the issue that was there, but there was already a hardwood floor under that. Oh, interesting. Um, and then I was also curious, um, do you know where your son found that photo, the Calvin Coolidge visit photo? Was that in the Durham archive or? I think I don't that think I've seen that the, one before. I think that was in the Durham archive. Oh, it was, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> and, and I think Nate and his fiance Carmen are on the chat. Maybe they can, they can answer that. Oh, sure. That's very cool. Do we have any more? I see some. I don't know if there's more chat um, questions. Or... Lots of thank yous. Um, no, it was on the Durham archive, but didn't have the address attached to it. Um, uh -huh. So let's just come across. That's very cool. Yeah, um, very good at finding those things. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, I guess I'll give, yeah, maybe like one more minute if anybody has. Oh, how is the house heated and air conditioned? Oh, very good question. Um, and I should have mentioned that. One thing that, uh, you know, going through this, it originally had two boilers. So there's, uh, what they do is one boiler took care of the second and third floors. The other boiler took care of the main floor. The first year I said, okay, let's see how bad this is. So it only took one year for us to figure out, we got to replace these things. And uh, OPB, OPDD and MUD took a look. MUD said, hey, you know what you need to do? You need to put geothermal in and uh, we'll, we'll rebate you, uh, you know, a thousand dollars if you spend that uh, $120,000 to put this new system in. We, we just couldn't do that. Um, as you saw, I'm not a VP and my wife and I don't own businesses. So that was just out of our budget. So <clears throat> we replaced it with a high efficiency uh, boiler system that uh, they, they work in tandem. And we've been very happy with that and not without its challenges. Now uh, we have window air conditioners is all we ran for quite a while. Two years ago, we, we installed on the third floor because that's where most of the heat uh, comes in. Uh, we, we put in uh, the uh, uh, ceiling units that they use the, uh, the Mitsubishi system. So th those are very efficient so we can remove the uh, window units and it, it keeps it cool. And uh, thinking about expanding on that because that, that unit we put up there could, could actually go into the second floor if we want to. Oh, cool. Uh, oh. We did uh, just throw out there too. We did have hail damage a few years back, and so the roof okay. has been totally replaced mm -hmm. and in much better condition. So it'll be another hundred-year roof. Um, and also, Nate and Carmen want you to tell everyone what your current project is. Current project. Thank you. I actually I meant to mention that current project. We're working on the carriage house that's uh, that was set up on the second floor. That was servants' quarters. Uh, and, and we're redoing that. It's going to be 600 uh, square feet uh, with a deck off of it. It's going to allow uh, people to use that as an Airbnb. So this fall, oh. you'll be able to rent that if you want to spend the weekend in Blackstone. I hope you do. Uh, <laughs> we'd uh, love to have you as our guests. So we're, we're looking at doing that and uh, 
as we speak, we're working on it. Very cool. Awesome. Well, it looks like that was the last question comment. Um, so thank you again, Jim, so much for sharing your, your family's history story. Um, we're lucky enough to live not far away, so we, uh, we enjoy walking by and enjoying the lilies in the yard. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's it in terms of questions. Um, Very but yeah. Very thank good. You thank, you so you much and thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and be sure to sign up for uh, next, next May's uh, talk on Stanford Bear. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye.